on House Bill 6802. Senator Fasano. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as the hour grows late, I will try to keep my comments brief. I do want to thank those who worked very hard on putting this budget in front of us. I know that takes a lot of time and effort, and I do appreciate uh, the staff and the members of the circle who did put the document together. However, I do disagree with the philosophy and the intent of this document, and let me tell you why. What we're talking about is right off the bat, $880 million in new taxes. And if the sales tax exemption, which we're going to get to, the decrease from 6 to 5.5 go, does not go into effect, you're talking about a $1.2 billion straight tax increase. $1.2 billion. That's the minimum. That's the straight tax, if you would. Then we have another category that's sometimes called revenue adjustments or other, which really is another $400 million. So you're talking about a budget document that may pass tonight that's a $1.6 billion tax increase. That's what it is. It is a $1.6, probably one of the largest tax increases we've ever done in the state of Connecticut, $1.6 billion tax increase. In addition to that, we have securitization. What that is is borrowing. So we got a $1.6 billion tax increase and a $1.3 billion securitization. That's a fancy word to say we're going to borrow because we don't have enough money. And how are we going to borrow it? Well, the presumption is we're going to take a string of income for the next so four years, five years in the future, and we're going to pledge that so we have money today. So we're going to say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pledge this string of income against revenue you give us today, $1.3 billion. That's how we're doing this. Then we've got $4 billion, or $3 billion, of one-time revenue. This is a mixture for what I believe to be a fiscal disaster in two years. And I wouldn't start writing home right now and start talking about that there's going to be a sales tax reduction from 6% to 5.5%, and here's why. The way it works is between the time that this passes and some time before January 1st, there's going to be a revenue estimate to determine if the revenue is within 1% of what the, board, the uh, Revenue Finance Board approved here tonight. And if it's in within that 1%, in other words, we're on keel, we're heading towards a number we think, the sales tax is going to get reduced. Now, we've got to make that calculation soon enough that every merchant in the state of Connecticut could go into their program and change that percentage from 6% to 5.5%. It is not an easy task. It is not an easy task for retail stores in particular to make that reduction because everything is done on computer. So that's going to have to get done. So we should do that in a very timely manner. But then what the law goes on to say is after we make that reduction, if between January 1st and June 30th, the comptroller will give monthly statements so in that six months, you get the monthly statement. If just one of those monthly statements, just one, doesn't get within that 1%, sales tax goes back up. So we could have a bad one month. We could have March could be bad because of a snowstorm. Or we could have a very cold spring that happens here, and sometime the spring sales go down. We could have one bad revenue period. And what happens? Sales tax goes back up just because of one month. That's what the law says. That's what we're passing. Mr. President, we talk about cuts. And there was some discussion about 500 million worth of cuts. Mr. President, when you look at those 500 million dollars worth of cuts, I don't consider those cuts a significant portion of it. For instance, deferring the payment of judges' compensation on retirement. 
That's not a cut. That's just moving income. Pilot money. As we all may recall, we put some money away for pilot programs. Well, we don't have enough manufacturing businesses in the state of Connecticut that used all that money, so we have leftover. So we don't have to fund it as much because we're not doing as well in, with manufacturing businesses. They consider that a cut. That's not a cut. When you look at issues like the film tax credit reducing that, that's not a cut. And the Medicaid issues using the federal money, which is a great idea, but it's not a cut. No consolidation of agencies that we talked about early on. None of that is in here. So, Mr. President, we seem to be taking a $37 billion budget, which balances within $1 million. That's the balancing act there. With that $1 million, you need a small blip on the financial radar screen to make this run into trouble. That's why people are saying, we're going to be back in November. We're going to be back in December. There's not even a small margin of error in this budget. We have to take charge of our state. We have to take charge of our financial future. We all know that with the one-time revenues that we have, we are facing a fiscal crisis that we just we put off by not making the appropriate cuts, doing $4 billion of one-time revenue, and we know that we have a monster lurking in the distance that we're going to have to tackle. And we could do it now. With $37 billion <clears throat> budget and no real cuts, maybe less than $200 million, we have set a course for ultimate fiscal disaster. And we're going to see that very early on. We're going to see that before the first quarter of 2010 when the estimate, estimated taxes come in. We're going to see how bad we really are. We're never going to see a sales tax cut. And if we do, undoubtedly, it will be back July 1st because there's going to be a blip in a radar screen. Financially, there just must of that 1% for that six months between January and June. And what certainty does that give anybody? Yeah, you got a sales tax now. No, you don't have a, yeah, you do. No certainty. And we talk about in this building, we've talked in the circle about certainty. There is no certainty. So I must say that I know a lot of people did a lot of hard work. And I know that their intentions are well reasoned. But when you look at the financial condition we're in and you look at the economic times we're facing, we have to react. And I hope when we come back, because we will, not with the implementers, when we come back to deal with this budget for budget adjustments, I hope we do a job and we do some serious cuts so we don't run into the problem that most of us see in the future. So, Mr. President, with that, I will be voting no on this bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.